How have you have you ever wondered what makes these beautiful fiber optic decorations work like this? Or what makes a diamond sparkle with so many different colors? It has to do with an idea called the critical angle or total internal reflection. Okay, there's always a little bit of reflection as you can see by looking at our cat in the mirror. This really isn't in the mirror, this is a cat looking through a window. And the cat will see its reflection a little bit, but it can also see through the window. And so there's always a little bit of reflection going on when light hits a medium. There's a little bit of reflection, and then as it goes through the glass, it gets refracted, it gets bent as it goes through the glass. So this diagram here shows light going straight through. So if the light comes in on the normal, on, very perpendicular to the surface, it's just going to pass thr straight through and it's not going to bend at all. But here, when the light comes in at an angle to the normal, there's our normal, the perpendicular line, then it's going to bend. So it's going, this one's going from water into air. So as it goes from water into air, it's going from more to less dense or to a from a larger index of refraction to a smaller index of refraction. So it bends away from the normal. And we're going to actually calculate that once. So remember from the previous video, we had Snell's law, n sine theta equals n sine theta. Well, we would look up, if this is water, the bottom layer is water, we would look up the index of refraction for water and we would find that its index of refraction is 1.33. And so this is going from water into air and we're just going to use 1 as the index of refraction of air. And remember, that's a number you need to know. So let's say that this angle here is 20 degrees. Okay, so we're going to go from the water into the air and we're going to try to find this refracted angle. And you're going to see that it's, the angle is actually going to be bigger than it was in water. So 1.33, the index of refraction of water, times the sine of the 20 degrees, the angle it was in the water, is going to equal 1, the index of refraction of air, times the sine of the angle. And we're going to find out that our refracted angle, the angle that it comes out of the air at, is 27 degrees, which is bigger than the angle that it was in water. So that makes sense. Well, as we steep, as we make this angle going in bigger and bigger, see we have some, some of our lights getting reflected. We have some of our light getting reflected. As we make this angle bigger, some of it's getting reflected, but some of it's going, getting refracted. And do you see how this angle is getting bigger and bigger and bigger? Eventually, that angle is going to run along the surface, and this angle here is going to be 90 degrees. Well, if we look at Snell's Law, 1.33 sine theta, there's a magic angle, 1 sine, remember that's 90 degrees, remember we made it a right, at some point it was going to be a right angle. Well, it turns out the sine of 90 degrees is 1, so then you have the sine of the critical angle, Okay, because that's what we call that magic angle where instead of any of it going through, now all of it is going to reflect, is going to be 1 over 1.33. This is only for water. And so the critical angle for water is 48.7 degrees. So any angle bigger than 48.7 degrees, if we go back to our picture, any angle bigger than 48.7 degrees here 
any angle here bigger than 48.7, instead of the light going through, all of it is going to reflect. And that's what's happening inside of our fiber optics. Inside our fiber optics, we've got a light source over here, and it's giving off light. And that light's being passed through this plastic tube. So it's like there's plastic on the outside here, and then there's air in the middle of the tube. So it's like a skinny, skinny, skinny straw. And the air is come, or the light ray is coming in at an angle that is bigger than the critical angle. So instead of, you know, only a little, most of it doesn't go through, none of it goes through, and it just keeps bouncing off. There's all your little normals, and it'll bounce off, bounce off, bounce off, and then when it gets to the end of the fiber optic cable, it can actually come out. And it comes out of your fiber optic ca cable, and that's what gives you the little dots of white light on the end of the fiber optics. The cathedral is actually lit this way. Inside the cathedral, there is a giant spotlight in the basement of the cathedral. And there's all these fiber optic tubes that go all the way up to the top of the cathedral. And all those lights that are pointing down on the altar, you know what, I should erase this. So all the lights that are shining down on the altar at the at the front of the church, the light is coming out of here, but it left this giant spotlight. There's a whole bunch of little fiber optic things attached to it, and the light went doink, 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 until it came out, and now it can shine on the altar. And so they don't have to climb to the top of the cathedral to change those lights at the very top. They just go down in the basement and change the big spotlight in the bottom. Pretty cool, huh? So what does that have to do with how a diamond sparkles? Well, remember we talked before and we said that the different colors of light were reflected, re re were refracted at different angles and the red doesn't bend as much as the blue because it has a lower frequency. So low frequency light doesn't bend as much as high frequency light. And so we've got this incoming light ray that's a mixture of the two colors and the red doesn't bend as much as the blue. And the red's going to come in. Some of it is actually going to leave the diamond here. And you'll see a red glint. But this one's going to come in. And it's going to hit here. And then it's going to bounce off here. And you may see a blue glint here. Because the red and the blue, once they get into the diamond, are bouncing around the inside of the diamond at different angles. So this diagram shows how the light is bouncing around inside and you can see that the red and the blue get separated and actually end up leaving the diamond at different places. So that's why when you turn a diamond you'll get glints of blue, you get glints of red, you'll get glints of green because remember there's green light in there too. And there's actually a perfect angle that you want your diamond to be cut so that the light comes out at a whole bunch of different angles. So the general equation to find the critical angle is that the sine of the critical angle, and this is just a derivation from uh, Snell's law, is the ratio of the two indexes of refraction. Okay, so which one goes on top? Well, remember, sine theta has to be less than 1. It only goes from negative 1 to 1. So you're always going to put the smaller over the bigger. And that's really the easier way to remember it. People go N2 over N1 and which one's N2 and which one's N1? Just put the smaller one on top and the bigger one on the bottom. And you're always going to be going, when you're finding the critical angle, you're always going to be going from a more dense medium, more dense medium, into a less dense medium. Because remember when you go the other way, well, remember when you go from more dense to less dense, you bend away from the normal. And that's where you're going to be able to get that 90 degree angle. 
if you're going from less to more, you're going to come in and you're going to bend towards the normal and you're going to end up with a small, small, small angle. So you're not going to have that spot where it's not going to refract anymore. It's just going to start going straight down as opposed to running along the surface. And you're not going to see this light that runs along the surface. And then anything greater than that critical angle, instead of going through, it's not going to go through anymore. It's going to reflect and your angle of incidence is going to equal your angle of reflection. So here's something to think about. Use what you learned about refraction and the dispersion, that's what we call it, when the different colors of light refract at different angles, the dispersion and the critical angle. How does that create a rainbow? You think about that.